Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brainbean here again. You know, Razer's put out a bunch of really great mice this year. So if you're looking at picking up a new mouse for the holidays and you're wondering which one you should get and you're interested in getting one from Razer, I thought I would put together a quick guide video for you since I have all of these on hand as to which one you think might be best for you. Now, if you see one of these you wanna learn more about, I do a full length reviews on pretty much all of these down in the description. So you can check those out after this video. But let's take a look at how to pick the best Razer mouse for you. Secret Lab combines best-in-class materials, a plethora of finish options, and industry-leading comfort to provide the ultimate seating experience. With models for users of all sizes and aesthetic tastes, there's sure to be a chair for any setup. Click the link in the description to find out which chair is right for you. And before we jump into the guide, I just want to mention that even though this is kind of meant to help you choose the optimal mouse for you, everybody's unique and much like choosing a mechanical keyboard switch, there's no perfect option for everybody. It really comes down to what you like and what your personal preference is. So if there's something that you like, that's what you should go with, not what some nerd like me on the internet is telling you. The first thing we're going to look at is hand size. Now Razer classifies this into three different categories, small, medium, and large. I'm getting real scientific here. To check your hand size, you simply measure from the base of your hand all the way up to the tip of your middle finger to get the length, and then measure from the thumb knuckle to the outer edge of your palm to get the width. For razor mice, a small hand is considered any length below 17 centimeters and a width of 7.5 centimeters to 8.5 centimeters. Medium in length is 17 to 20 centimeters with a width of 8.5 centimeters to 10 centimeters and large is any length over 20 centimeters and a width over 10 centimeters and up. And once you know what hand size you are, it'll make it a lot easier to figure out which mouse will work best for you in what grip styles. Now Razer sent me this cool scale chart. So if I put my hand down on it, you can see that I'm just above large hand size. Hashtag humble brag. And once we've got hand size figured out, the next thing you wanna look at is what grip style do you like? Now the three most commonly recognized grips are palm grip, claw grip, and fingertip grip. Palm grip is essentially letting your whole hand rest on the mouse completely. It allows for a comfortable, relaxed hand position with the maximum amount of support. Now while this is more comfortable, it's not as ideal for fast, flicky gameplay. And I find that medium to larger ergo type mice typically palm better since they have more surface to rest on. Claw grip is when you take the back of your palm and rest it up against the rear of the mouse and then use your fingertips to grasp the buttons and the sides of the mouse. It's certainly not as comfortable as palm grip, but for those who do enjoy using this or take the time to get used to it, it can offer you a bit more agility. Lastly, we have fingertip grip. Now fingertip grip is essentially exactly what it sounds like. Without having any palm contact on the mouse, you just hold the mouse using only your fingertips to control it. Because fingertip grip isn't anchored by your palm, you do get a little bit more finesse in your vertical movements, and you can be a little bit more quick and nimble with it. And typically, this grip style really performs better with smaller mice. So now that we've talked about the grip styles, I'd encourage you if you're at your desk right now to just reach out and grab your mouse. How does your hand naturally rest on it when you're just reaching for it without thinking about it? Are you resting your whole hand on it or are you just using your fingertips? This is a really good way to just figure out which grip is best for you. Now for the purpose of this video, the mice that we're looking at is the Naga Pro Wireless, the Basilisk Ultimate, the Viper Ultimate, the Death Adder V2 Pro, and then the mini variations of the Death Adder and the Viper. Obviously you can substitute the wired versions for the Death Adder or the Basilisk or the Naga for the purposes of this comparison because they're pretty much the same size minus a little bit of weight because the batteries do make the wireless versions just a little bit heavier. And while we're on the subject of wireless mice, that is another consideration that you should think about. Now, I do think this has become less of a consideration in terms of performance than it used to be and more just a matter of do you wanna spend the extra money to have the freedom of the wireless? I think it used to be that wired mice were a lot more consistent and you could rely on them not losing connection, but I feel like Razer's Hyperspeed Wireless now actually converted me from being a wired mouse user and I haven't noticed any issues with it using it over the years since the Viper Ultimate released. So really I think it comes down to budget and again, if you wanna deal with charging. Now that that's out of the way though, let's talk about which mice pair best with certain grip styles. Mice that I find good for palming would be the Naga Pro, any variation of the Death Adder, the Basilisk, and the Viper if you have smaller to medium sized hands. My preference for palm grip would be the Death Adder followed very closely by the Basilisk. I just think the Death Adder lends itself to a little bit more versatility than the Basilisk does. As per Razor's guide, they say that all these mice are good for claw grip, but I would caution you to look at your hand size when making that decision as I have trouble claw gripping the mini mice, so just keep that in mind. 
As for fingertip grip, the Death Adder V2 is a good option if you have medium to large hands. The Viper, I would say, makes an excellent choice for fingertip grip on just about any hand size. And then of course, the Viper and the Death Adder Mini if you want a little bit more nimble option for just about any hand size as well. And if you are a lefty, obviously you guys know the struggles of how hard it is to find a gaming mouse that will work for you. There are a couple of options in Razer's portfolio. Obviously the Ambidextrous Viper would be a really solid go-to. There's also a left-handed Naga variant that you can find, but other than that, that's pretty much gonna be what's out there for you right now. There used to be a left-handed Death Adder, but that hasn't been in production for a while. Now, typically on a mouse video or a comparison or review that I would do, I would spend more time talking about the internals and the sensors. Now, these are all very comparable with some minor differences. You're either gonna get the 5G optical sensor or the Focus Plus optical sensor. And while you do get a little bit more features on the Focus Plus optical sensor on like the Basilisk Ultimate, Viper Ultimate, Death Adder V2 Pro, the 5G optical sensor still gives you pretty much the same DPI range with a few minor variations. But I feel like for the average person, you're not really gonna notice much difference. And unless you're really changing the tweaks and using those automated features of the Focus Plus optical sensor, which is beneficial, the average person really is not gonna notice much difference there. I would weigh your decision more on how much these mice weigh, the shape of them, and how it fits with your play style and grip style. Because again, the performance on these is gonna be very comparable. Now, with Razer, I would be remiss if I did not at least touch on the RGB lighting aspect of it. Again, I wouldn't really let this affect your decision too much because for the most part, a lot of these have very similar lighting capabilities with typically the triple headed snake logo and the grip. The Basilisk Ultimate definitely has the most RGB potential out of all of these mice, but I really wouldn't recommend basing your decision just off the lighting capabilities on the mice. Now, just to wrap it up, I wanna briefly talk about each mouse and what grip style and play style I think suit going with that one the best. I think the Naga Pro is great for people who primarily play MMOs or MOBAs and want the extra buttons on their mouse for those macros, but still want the flexibility to be able to play FPS games too with the larger thumb button module that you can swap out much like the Death Adder side buttons. It's on the larger and heavier side, so it's not as ideal for like a main FPS mouse, but for use on the side in between raids, I think it's great. I find the Basilisk shape has a great ergonomic feel and is wonderful for a lot of applications. Now, I personally use the Basilisk when working and editing mostly because I find it comfy for palming during low intensity stuff. I've used it with fingertip grip in the past when gaming, but I find that the Viper or the Death Adder are much more suited to that kind of gameplay. I would recommend this one a little bit more for general gaming and PC use as it's good in a lot of different situations, but it's not as fast and flicky as some of the other mice on this list. The Viper is a nice, lightweight, fast, low profile mouse that's a great all around gaming mouse for general use, but I think it really shines with faster FPS style gameplay. Its ambidextrous design means that anybody can use it. Just keep in mind that its low profile shape makes it less natural feeling to palm, but if you want a nice, nimble performer for any hand size, it is super solid. The Viper Mini, as the name implies, is a smaller, lighter version of the Viper. You lose the wireless option on this guy, but it's a good option if you like the ambidextrous shape and you want to get a little bit more nimble action out of it. Really only fingertip grippable unless you're looking for a mouse for a young kid. It's affordable and it's a fast, fun mouse if you really want to be able to flick it around. The Death Adder V2 Pro or really any variation of the Death Adder is just such an iconic mouse shape. I find this mouse to be the best all-around option for right-handed gamers with medium to large hands as it's able to comfortably accommodate all three grip styles and it has a nice balance of weight and nimbleness. The Death Adder V2 Mini, much like the Viper Mini, is an awesome little fingertip grip champ that's a little bit faster but still really comfy and it comes in at a great price. This is another really good option for people with smaller hands or for little kids or that just want a quicker version of the Death Adder. Well, there you have it, guys. That's it for this guide video. Let me know in those comments down below which one of these mice you're planning on picking up next. And of course, if you made it this far into the video, I'd love to see you subscribe and stick around for more content from me in the future. Of course, I do have those full length reviews of these mice down in the description if you wanna go further down the mouse rabbit hole. But as always, guys, stay safe out there, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next one.